हेलो और को विल वेट फॉर टू मोर मिनट्स एंड देन विल स्टार्ट द सेशन हेलो गिरेंद्र All right. Let's start the session. Uh, can somebody unmute himself and uh, confirm if my screen is visible? And when I'm changing the slides, it is working as well. Or Kau Girendra, I've allowed your microphone, so you can unmute yourself and please respond. you can you can also use the meeting chat to respond or just let me know somehow yes my screen is visible all right i'm assuming that it is working fine and let's start the session hello everyone welcome to the last and 12th weekly discussion and uh, and our clearing session um, session of this NPTEL course maintenance and repair of concrete structures and OC 23C06 which is taken by professor Radha Krishna ji Pillai of IIT Madras i am ashirvad satpathi i am a pmr research scholar at iit delhi and i am also the officially assigned teaching assistant for this NPTEL course what i do is i generally take this weekly discussion sessions where we uh, discuss the problems that have been given to you in the weekly assignments and also we take the doubts that you might be having regarding some of the lecture lectures of the previous weeks there is another officially assigned ta to the session uh, his name is umesh and uh, he takes his sessions on fridays from 7 to 9 pm and i take my sessions on saturdays from 6 to 8 pm I have also pasted the link of the previous week's session, the YouTube link uh, of that session in the meeting chat and 
the link of the slides uh, that I had used in the previous session is also pasted in the link chat. You can in the meeting chat you can check it out if you want, right? In today's session, we'll be discussing the uh, week 12 assignment, 12 problems, and uh, this week uh, 12 lectures were regarding the service life estimation of different structures or el structural elements and uh, uh, the parameters, the input design, input parameters that are in the uh, modeling uh, requirements that we need uh, in order to assess the service life or corrosion free life of different structures. And these uh, problems are more or less related to that. And then we'll be taking some of the doubts that you might be having regarding these lectures or any of the previous week's lectures, right? The first question was, uh, residual corrosion-free service life of a structure can be estimated by adding the corrosion initiation years and the age of the structure. Is it a true or a false statement? Yes, can somebody answer to this question? Okay, uh, since nobody is here uh, and we have to continue the session. Okay, I'll be discussing this question. So this is actually a false statement. Because uh, we know that, let's say this is the graph. This is the damage level. And this is the time, time elapsed. The mechanism of corrosion is works like this. So from this period till there is no damage at all, this time. This is this phase is known as the corrosion free phase. And this time is where the corrosion initiation happens. So this is the corrosion initiation time. And then this is the propagation phase. So during the corrosion initiation phase, there is no corrosion at all. This is the corrosion propagation phase. All right. Let's say we are somewhere here. This is T. And we want to calculate the residual service life. This is the actual age of structure. Age of structure. And we want to calculate the residual corrosion free service life of a structure. Then T residual, the residual corrosion free service life of a structure will be. T i minus T. So this will be a difference of this structure. So the residual corrosion free service life will be this much. Right? So it is not adding, not adding the corrosion initiation, rather it is subtracting. Right. All right. Moving on to the second question. As per the lecture, what is the major challenge associated in the service life estimation of a structure? And the statements given are obtaining realistic input parameters, lack of service life tools and models, poor quality cementitious binder systems being used. Which of these options is correct with respect to uh, what is the major challenge that is faced during the service life estimation of a structure. I'll allow you a mic, Kaushiki. You can uh, respond to this question if you want. Yes, do you want to respond? Do you want to try? 
what is the major challenge that we face as per the lecture what is the major challenge that we face regarding uh, during the service life estimation of a structure is it uh, obtaining the realistic input parameters is it uh, the lack of service life estimation tools and models or is it poor quality cementation binder systems that are being used in the construction sites which of this is correct you can unmute yourself and answer all right the answer to this question is obtaining realistic input parameters so uh, we know that there are a lot of service life tools and models already available like uh, one is a very uh, reputed tool or a very uh, popular tool that we use for service life estimation and that is life 365 i'll show an example uh, in the question number 6 how to uh, how do we use that tool and then uh, there is there are other tools as well like uh, in the lecture there, there are a lot of tools that have been discussed and uh, other models that have been de developed recently to calculate the service life of a given structure again poor quality uh, cementitious binder systems being used has nothing to do with estimation of the structure so nothing related to estimation of service life i mean uh, when we use poor quality materials of course it will reduce the service life that is uh, from that from what it is expected but using poor quality materials in site doesn't uh, is no way connected to the estimation of service life of a structure so this is not the answer. The correct answer actually is obtaining realistic input parameters uh, as in uh, what is the surface chloride concentration at a given area location, surface chloride concentration of a given location, time to reach maximum threshold estimation of chloride threshold which is a major as we have seen in the last lecture this is a major uh, problem because we have different uh, techniques to me measure the chloride threshold values but uh, they measure in different quantities or in different uh, units so they're reported in different units and these are not comparable the the units vary uh, largely and uh, there is a large variation in the estimation of chloride threshold values there is also the estimation of diffusion coefficient so this is regarding chloride Similarly, for carbonation, pH threshold, <laughs> carbonation rate, diurnal variations, relative humidity. And the common property is the cementitious matrix, the properties of the cementitious matrix itself, and how it uh, relates to the carbonation and the chloride induced corrosion is uh, still being researched. So, this is common to both, and there is exposure to sunlight. So, all of these uh, environmental conditions as well as uh, other factors 
control uh, the estimation of a service life of a given structure and obtaining this input parameters is prime of prime importance to uh, have an accurate estimation of the service life uh, however obtaining this parameters is very difficult and we require as discussed in the last few uh, lectures as well we require standardized techniques uh, which are reliable and uh, have a good correlation with the uh, experimental data so that all uh, i mean the, the whole research fraternity can uh, use these techniques and produce results and data so that we understand uh, these mechanisms in a better way and uh, carry out better service life estimation of structures all right moving on to the third question the the binding capacity of admixed chlorides is dependent on which of these factors type of cementitious binder used the binder replacement level type of coarse aggregates used water to cement ratio which of these factors affect the chloride binding capacity all right dr satish is yes. i'll i'll allow your mic dr satish just give me a moment yeah, I have allowed your mic. You can unmute yourself and speak, Dr. Satish. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible now. Binding admixed chloride, that depends very much on the cementitious binder. Right. Then binder replacement level, right. that is relevant. Coarse aggregate is not relevant. And then it is dependent on diffusion, which is related to water cement ratio. Right, right. Thank you. So these three are the correct answers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yes. So what is the type of binder uh, that is being used will uh, affect the binding capacity of admixed chlorides. And before going uh, to discuss all these options, let's know what is binding capacity of admixed chlorides. Whenever there is chlorides, uh, that are admixed chlorides is in, during the uh, time of mixing or production of the concrete, there might be chlorides that are admixed in the mixing water the, the, due to the salts present in the water. There might be chlorides coming from uh, the admixtures, the uh, chemical admixtures that we use, let's say retarders, accelerators, or um, uh, superplasticizers. Uh, these uh, admixtures also contain some chlorides in them. So these are certain sources from which chlorides get admixed within the concrete. And therefore, we do not have to wait for the chlorides uh, from the surface to tra tra get transported to the level of the reinforcement because these chlorides are admixed and uh, uniform throughout the concrete and they are directly in contact with the steel. And these are more dangerous as compared to the surface chloride or chloride ingress. Admixed chlorides are more uh, dangerous. Now, and, uh, what is the binding capacity? Whenever at a, at a given age, at a given age of a concrete, there are three types of chlorides that are, uh, so two, two basic types of chlorides that are available. One is free chlorides or rather water sol soluble chlorides. And then there is bound chlorides. Uh, complexes, uh, polynuclear complexes are formed uh, with uh, cations such as right, such as calcium cations, and these two constitute to the total chlorides. I'll write it again. Inch of concrete. There is free chlorides 
or water soluble fluorides and then there is bound chlorides which form complexes with cations such as all right and these two to in total constitute which is what is known as total chlorides in the system and this is more or less similar to what is known as acid soluble chlorides when as per the tests test methods that are available now we uh, want to know the amount of binding capacity is the amount of uh, binding that can occur uh, between the chloride ions that are available inside the concrete and the cations in the concrete now these cations are provided by the cementitious binders because due to, uh, as we know cement has in itself the the phases that are pre uh, present in the cement are uh, calcium and silica based and uh, these calcium cations are provided by the cementitious binder used therefore this is the correct option then there is binder replacement level so whenever you are replacing these binders using scms such as fly ash silica fume slag so these uh, scms also provide cations and therefore the binding capacity uh, is dependent on these cementitious binders as well apart from this this scms also uh, control the pore volume as well as the pore connectivity and the pore size as well and uh, therefore uh, the binding capacity of admixed chlorides is also governed by the binder replacement level that is the cement being replaced by these scms so this is one of the answers type of coarse aggregate used has nothing to do with the admixed uh, uh, the binding capacity of the admixed chlorides and then there is water to cement ratio yes this is also an answer because um, as uh, dr satish has mentioned if water uh, water to binder ratio also uh, water to binder or water to cement ratio also controls uh, the void uh, the void volume that is the pore volume and the pore uh, sizes as well and uh, depending on that um, also water to cement ratio controls the degree of hydration at any given age and therefore uh, these all factors will contribute to the binding capacity of the admixed chlorides diffusion coefficient yes if it would have been uh, the, a case of surface chlorides or chloride ingress then uh, of course what would, uh, what uh, i mean the since water to cement ratio and all these factors govern the uh, pores and the pore uh, connectivity and the pore volume pore size everything therefore the transport of the chloride ions from the surface to the uh, core of the concrete will also be governed uh, by these factors so that indirectly the diffusion coefficient will also be governed so these three are the correct answers to this question also we know that uh, the binding capacity apart from these three factors there are several other factors the one of the major factors is also the chloride concentration itself we know that if uh, depending on the chloride concentration uh, uh, i mean the of the admixed chlorides that will also affect the binding capacity apart from these other factors and there are several other factors as well anyway moving on to the fourth question the cl chloride threshold values reported in the literature vary uh, because of the use of different ways of representation that is free or water sol soluble chlorides total or acid soluble chlorides and chloride to uh, hydroxyl ions ratio state the comparative variability among these values reported which of these uh, values and uh, is higher as compared to the other values free chloride greater than total chloride greater than cl to oh ratio total chloride greater than free chloride greater than cl to oh ratio cl to oh ratio greater than free chloride greater than total chloride C, uh, cl to oh ratio greater than total chloride greater than free chloride which of these answers is correct 
Uh, yes, Doctor Satish. Should I reply? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was it was told in the lecture that based on uh, review of literature, uh, there is variation of the order of three three times uh, uh, in the case of chlorides by OH ion ratio, right. followed by total chlorides. This multiplier was told to be two in the lecture, and uh, minimum variation is seen in case of three chlorides. Right. So based on literature survey, last option is the correct option. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yes, anyway, this is uh, from the last slide as well, from what we have discussed, this is very clear that total chloride will again, total chloride is equal to free chlorides plus bound chlorides. So this is uh, anyway known. And then from the uh, lecture as well, we have seen that chloride to hydroxyl ion ratio gives more values uh, than all these three uh, uh, among all these three tests the total chloride which is done by the acid soluble test and then the free chloride which is done by this uh, water soluble test so the chloride uh, chloride to the hydroxyl ion ratio these uh, the test values or the representation of this uh, ratio is higher than that of the other two so this is the correct answer right All right. Moving on to the fifth question, as per the lecture for developing a chloride threshold test method, which of the following consideration is not reliable? Using rebars in as received conditions, using rebars embedded in cement mortar, adding chloride to the fresh mix, chloride ponding on the surface. Which of this is not reliable? Should not be done for, a uh, for the estimation of chloride threshold in a test method. Yes, Doctor. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, using rebars in as a, uh, as received condition is relevant. Using uh, rebars embedded in cement mortar, yes, relevant. Adding chloride to the fresh mix, this was told to be most unreliable in the lecture because you have two types of chloride, as you told, uh, right. acid soluble chloride water soluble chlorides so we cannot go by adding chloride to the fresh mix that is the most unreliable we do not know how much will be fixed how much will be free right. chloride ponding on the dirty element so this third answer is correct right thank you uh, so yes actually uh, whenever we're carrying out a chloride threshold test as we have discussed in the previous session so thank you dr satish for answer this answering this question yes uh, so as i was saying uh, in the uh, previous lectures as well, we have discussed that uh, uh, what is chloride th threshold essentially is that um, there is a certain limit uh, which depends on the type of the cementitious matrix as well as the type of the steel that we are using. Uh, and these factors govern the limit till which the chlorides can get accumulated inside uh, the concrete before the corrosion is initiated so uh, so this is this uh, limit is known as the chloride threshold essentially and uh, for for a test method to be uh, able to reliably estimate a chloride threshold of a given cementitious matrix matrix and uh, steel system so uh, the first condition is required using rebars in as received conditions as received conditions means that if you're using ribbed rebars, so it should be ribbed and uh, whatever, I mean, uh, the if it has been left out in the open for a long time and it is it has uh, some rust stains, then it should be uh, removed before using it. So it should be in as received condition, in the uh, original condition before uh, casting it into a concrete element for the test. Then using rebars embedded in cement mortar, yes, it has. Uh, we have to make a reinforced concrete element for the test, so that we'll be able to estimate the chloride threshold and its uh, the interaction of the chlorides with the reinforcing bar. So it has to be a reinforced concrete element. Uh, 
adding chloride to the fresh mix no because this is uh, again this is this will give us the case of uh, admixed chloride when we are adding chlorides or uh, to the con uh, to the concrete element itself uh, the chlorides gets get uniformly uh, distributed in the mix and will not be able to estimate because with the passage of age and uh, from the uh, big from the day starting days uh, uh, will uh, there will be chloride present inside the matrix and as the hydration is uh, progressing uh, these chlorides will interact with the hydration products and uh, they will form complexes there will be bound and free, free chlorides and the variability of these bound and free chlorides cannot be reliably uh, used as input parameters to is estimate the chloride threshold so uh, chloride should not be admixed in the concrete mix rather we should pond and this is the uh, require the fourth statement we should pond this uh, this concrete element in a uh, in a water that has chlorides in it so the ponding water or the curing water should have chlorides in it so that we are providing a sufficient or a known amount of surface chloride concentration and we are trying to estimate what is the chloride threshold of a given uh, type of a concrete that of a given type of a reinforced concrete element so this is again required but so the uh, answer to this question is the not uh, the unreliable uh, option is we should not add chloride to the fresh mix of the concrete during the chloride threshold estimation test all right this the answer okay uh, this question uh, requires us to use the life 365 uh, software and uh, i'll show you the interface of that and uh, i'll show you how to input these values and uh, how we are getting the what are what results we are getting so the question was table below shows the input parameter of for estimation of service life use life 365 software and estimate the service life which of the following will have maximum time to corrosion initiation and there are five cases given the deficient coefficient these are the and uh, for all the five cases the input parameters for the estimation of the service life has been given what is the deficient coefficient the decay constant m the chloride threshold which is uh, denoted by the by percentage by weight of concrete surface chloride concentration percentage by weight of concrete is to build maximum surface chloride concentration so these parameters have been given i'll share my uh, screen again so that you'll be able to see the software uh, life 365 software in interface just give me a moment all right uh i hope my screen is visible the live 365 software interface is visible yes yes okay set it up so when when you open the life resistive software this is uh, the home page of that software or the interface and uh, i have already created a project uh, of this question for the assessment so uh, these are the details of the project that you want to mention for while calculation and then for the type of structure since we have to find a comparative uh, overview of uh, the service life estimation so we are not concerned with the dimensions or the type of structure and the structural uh, design aspects so i have taken these as a slabs and wall element uh, the, the options given as square column beams element which will be 2d the slabs and wall elements are 1d uh, as in uh, the thickness is not considered only uh, we are going for the length of the element and there is circular co columns which is again a 2d element i have taken 1d elements and the thickness and reinforced depth and area everything i have left as it is so 
this this will be constant for all the uh, cases a b c d e and then i have dis defined five cases when you move to the next tab that that is uh, exposure tab you can use either the defaults which is new york uh, i mean the locations are all uh, united states from united states so i just want it and we have been given with uh, we have been already given with the values right so we'll go for manual setting of the values and we know that uh, the maximum concentration for all the cases has been given the uh, surface chloride concentration has been given 0.8% by weight of concrete so i have mentioned that then uh yes to build to maximum surface concentration has been given 7.4 i have mentioned that then we move to, uh, to the uh, next tab that is the concrete mixtures tab wherein we define the other uh, factors that is diffusion coefficient chloride threshold so it is it will take some time to input these parameters to all the cases right so for case a when we select case a and uh, so either what you can do is you can uh, go for a non user defined case wherein it will calculate on its own based on the models so you just give uh, the water to cement ratio uh, and uh, what is the percentage of fly ash percentage of slag percentage of silica fume and rebar volume and rebar steel type again i have kept this constant for the uh, for all the cases the rebar steel type and the rebar volume percentage volume you can also mention the type of inhibitor so let's say i, I in this case i have used the custom parameters but you can go for these parameters wherein uh, you can uh, mention what is the type of inhibitors or what are the type of barriers that you use for this for these cases i have not used any i have only used what are the values that have been given in the question so diffusion coefficient 8.87 for uh, the first four cases so this is the diffusion coefficient for the first four cases then uh, for first case m is 0.2 the decay constant hydration years i have again kept constant since uh, i am assuming that it is a uh, given type of a concrete so the hyd hydration years i am assuming to, uh, 25 years the chloride threshold for the first case is 0.05 in fact it is the same for all the uh, cases and the propagation years i have mentioned zero because we want um, the uh, corrosion the maximum time till corrosion initiation so the propagation has to be zero so that will get the time till corrosion initiation alone and then uh, we i have to calculate the service life so for the first case a the service life comes as 9.4 years similarly i have carried out all the other cases as well and you can see that the for the first case it is 9.4 years the service life till initiation phase then uh, for the second case it, it is 66.7 years the third case it is 34.4 years and the fourth case it is 46.4 and for the last case that is case e it is 88.4 years so the maximum uh, time till corrosion initiation is for the case e all right so this is what so there are other um, tabs as well wherein you can calculate the cost so you can define the cost per cubic meter of concrete and rebar cost inhibitor cost all the cost and uh, what is the cost of construction as well as repair repair there is construction cost there is repair cost and based on that it will uh, the software will give you the life cycle cost so and then you can generate the reports of your calculation so this is just to give you an example of uh, a given type of uh, software 
software that we use to predict the service life as well as life cycle costs of uh, structure, structural elements. <coughs> there are several other models and software available as well. So uh, these, these are very well uh, correlated with the experimental data and are being widely used right now. Okay, the correct answer to this question is actually E. I guess it was 88 point and mention these values that will be helpful for everyone. Yeah. Anyway, since these values are not constant based on the input parameters, so I'll not mention these values, but the correct answer to this question is E, right? And coming to the last question, question number seven, for a building in Kerala, Corrosion signs, that is rust stains, cracks on concrete surface, etc., were visible within two years of after construction. As a part of condition assessment, concrete cores were obtained. A typical chloride profile from concrete core is shown below. From the chloride profile obtained, what can be the reason for premature corrosion within two years of rebars in the building? High diffusion coefficient of concrete, premixed chloride during construction, surface chloride concentration is high and delay constant is low uh, sub severe exposure condition which could be the governing factor for this type of a premature corrosion and why yes i would like to yeah yeah doctor. respond yeah go ahead you see uh, the figure shows that it is almost constant chloride concentration level throughout from the beginning. Right. So uh, within two years, this chloride level was shown to be more than 0.25% and it is constant throughout. Right. It means this chloride was present in the beginning itself. So the third answer, surface chloride concentration is high. Yes, that is high. And delay constant is low. You know, this appears to be the correct answer. Diffusion coefficient, etc., come in picture if it is if it's a case of variation. Right. Here we don't see any variation; it is constant. Right. Right. Premix chloride con uh, yeah, during con construction, yes. Uh, surface chloride concentration is high and delay. So premix chloride concentration during construction. In the beginning itself, it had been added. So second answer is correct. Right. Uh, right. Surface chloride concentration is high and delay. So. The delay, etc., comes in picture if we see some variation. There is no variation here. Right. And severe exposure condition that is existing from the beginning itself is Kerala near seashore, etc. So, second answer appears to be correct. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. So, first of all, now we know that there are signs of corrosion that is uh, being seen in this building. And this building is in Kerala. So, uh, we are assuming that it is near by the coast and it has sufficient. Uh, source of uh, and sufficient concentration of chlorides in the air or uh, through other means as well. But the problem is within two years of construction, just within two years of construction, and we are assuming that at least it is designed for 50 years or like 30 years or 50 years that the building has been designed, and just within two years of construction, it is uh, showing signs of corrosion. So based on this assumption, uh, based on this uh, given factor, we can say that uh, the corrosion rate is very fast. And this has to be a case of premixed chloride. This, this is the first sign that uh, this has to be cased of admixed chlorides. Uh, because uh, the, even if, let's say, the, uh, severe, there is severe exposure to uh, th there is severe exposure condition and there is the surface chloride concentration is very high and uh, the diffusion co coefficient is also high but uh, the diffusion rate is also very high but uh, as per and uh, the experience and as per the history of all the deterioration of uh, uh, large structures or uh, the, uh, the damage and uh, failure of structures due to con uh, chloride induced corrosion we have seen that these processes, if it is uh, a case of chloride ingress, then these processes tend to take time, uh, at least till, uh, I mean, 
around 10 years 15 years uh, they might take some time to uh, corrode the um, uh, re reinforcing steel but if it is a case of admixed chlorides the corrosion happens very fast then coming to the test results from the concrete cores that have been taken from the structure and the chloride profile has been drawn and we can see as dr satish also mentioned that the uh, the chloride concentration is more or less constant throughout uh, the dist i mean uh, throughout the uh, depth of the test specimen let's say this is a concrete core that has been taken out and we can see that from this, this let's say this is the exposed surface what this figure means is that the chloride concentration is same till at least 20 mm so or you can see it other way round so the ex, the if we look at this and this is the exposed surface the chloride concentration is same there till uh, a depth of 20 mm right so if uh, there is the chloride concentration is same throughout a given depth then that means that the chloride is mixed uniformly in the concrete and therefore it has to be a case of admixed chloride because if it would have been a, a ingress of uh, chloride a case of chloride ingress then the concentration would be would vary it the concentration would be high at uh, the exposed surface while it will be low uh, uh, towards the concrete low towards the core so this will be a case of chloride ingress but uniform distribution uniform chloride concentration means that it is a case of admixed chlorides so the correct answer is premixed chloride during co construction high deficient coefficient yes these factors also contribute but um, first of all these take time and second the uh, if and if there is a high deficient coefficient of, of the concrete the chloride concentration would vary would show some variation and would want to be constant throughout the a given depth second uh, surface chloride concentration might be high and delay constant is low could be uh, the answer but again there would be variation the chloride concentration would want to be constant throughout the depth and then again the same for the severe exposure condition so if there is no variation that means if there is a uniform chloride concentration throughout a given depth that makes that that, that the chloride is make, uh, uniformly mixed in the concrete and that, that this means that it is a case of admixed chlorides and not chloride in place the correct answer is premixed chlorides or admixed chlorides right this ends the uh, week 12 assignment questions thank you for attending this lecture session and if you have any doubts we can take this doubt the session will go until 8 pm and uh, i'm planning to have another session next week probably uh, on tuesday that will be just for one hour if it happens so i'll have to take permissions from nptl first so if it happens it will be only for one hour and uh, in that session so I, I think if you have any suggestions you can suggest that otherwise i'm thinking to discuss some sample uh, problems related to durability and deterioration mechanisms and repair and maintenance strategies just some sample questions for as or practice questions for the exam but if you have any specific suggestions that uh, we might discuss in the coming session if it happens on tuesday then uh, you can suggest that now as well like if you want any help with any of the concepts well presented mr shivar Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Satish. So it will be uh, informed to you if we are going to have another one hour session or not. And if we are having it, then that will be the last session. Otherwise, this is the last session.
if you have any doubts you can discuss it now the session will go until 8 p
all right we are closing the session for now thank you Thank mm -hmm. you.